Do you want to hear about some really wild crochet patterns? I hope they aren't too wild. Wild like wild animal, not, you know, it's not a party up in here. Today I'm going to share my collection of really wild crochet animal patterns. And I'm going to kick off with one I made quite recently, which is this giraffe, which I am so excited to show you. I took a bit of a risk with keeping the neck as long as I did with this one. I wasn't entirely certain it would support the weight of its own head. I am so relieved that it does. It's got quite a few details, but if you have been crocheting for a while, they shouldn't be too difficult for you to put together. So it's got the little ossicones here, and obviously they need hand sewing on afterwards as do these funky patches. In the pattern I give instructions of how to make the different sizes of patterns and I show you where I've placed them on the body but really it's a nice way to give it a bit of your own twist as well. You can make more patches if you want or fewer if that's what you prefer but I'm really pleased with this one so that's the crochet giraffe and in a very similar vein it's the okapi. Now I don't know if you're familiar with okapis they look like chimeras they're amazing. They look like a, a zebra had a baby with a horse and a giraffe somehow, but they didn't, they're their own thing. I think actually they were only sort of rediscovered in the wild in like the 1970s or something like that. Just absolute one of my favorite things. I am amazed every time I see one at a zoo and I wish I could see one every day. And now I sort of can with this crochet one. I kept the color changes nice and simple in this pattern. Don't worry about making your color changes ultra neat unless that's a thing that you're sort of, you know, fixated on doing for your own reasons color changes can be quick and simple when you're making up a toy, particularly when you're making markings. There's not dead straight lines in, in nature on zebra striping. These are as laid out and sensible as you're gonna get. Make your color changes however you want. It's still gonna be super cute, especially if you give it really big eyes like I did on this one. Next, we've got the scorpion. I can't show you in real life the example of the scorpion because I'm filming this at night, unusually for me, but it is like some of the other patterns that we're going to mention this evening. Currently underneath my son so I won't wake him up to retrieve a scorpion or any of the other things but you can see some images on the screen of how that looks I adored making this it was the sort of functionality of using pipe cleaners to get the position of the stinger on the back and the claws and making it look creepy cute which is always really good fun. Then we've got the zebra. The zebra I made as a gift for my friend's baby after she completely fell in love with my daughter's uh, horse version of the same sort of evolution of patterns. Now the interesting one on this was the striping. I became quite fixated on not having the striping done as these regular colour changes like we just saw in the okapi here. I really wanted them to look more sort of natural shapes of zebra stripes. Frankly a really difficult thing to do with colour changes so what I did is I crocheted chains and then I worked the chains by sewing them onto the structure of the zebra. It's quite a bit more hand sewing than normal but I'd love to hear what you think of that one. Next up, love this because it's quite a change of pace for me in terms of scale, it's the crocodile. This little pattern I absolutely adored making. Small things aren't always quicker right because they can be sort of more fiddly and intricate but this was really nice and quite quick to work up. I added these little details of the teeth in here and this hinged jaw. I'm an animal person but I am particularly a reptile person too. I am recording this in a room that is surrounded by reptile terrariums. Um, in fact, because it's night, if it wasn't so dark because of the lighting in that corner, you'd, you'd be able to see a lizard there as well. But yeah, reptiles, massively my thing. Hopefully, at least a little bit your thing too, especially when they've got these little character features. It's tiny things, I think, like the sort of eye ridges and, and the teeth there that bring a pattern out without causing too much more effort for you as you make it. Next up is the koala. This was so much fun. It is the first marsupial that I've ever crocheted and I really enjoyed getting the colour right for it, but also had so much kind of contemplation over the position of ears with this one. I don't think I've ever moved ears so much on a toy in my life, up, down, side to side. The point that I settled on, I was really pleased with, but it's amazing and it really goes to show how much something as small as changing the positions of the ears, how much big a difference that makes to the overall look of the toy. Then we dive in a slightly different stylistic direction again with the polar bear. 
I thought he was here, he was. Cow overboard. Here's my polar bear cub. I really wanted this to have that kind of cub cuteness, so I gave it much bigger eyes. Super quick and easy one, this one. If you're a beginner, you've not made a crochet toy before, it's a good one to go with, although maybe I'd skip the chenille type yarn and stick with something that's uh, less tangly. But more on that up there, I've got views. I'll show you the next one as a two pair. I can't remember who came first, but this is my llama and alpaca patterns. Now, <laughs> it's one of those things that, you know when you know too much about a topic and something rubs you up the wrong way? I am forever, I feel like it's forever. It's probably once a year, overhearing people misidentifying a llama as an alpaca or an alpaca as a llama. Therefore, I made both <laughs> with subtly different features in order for that distinction to be perhaps more clear. I then w went with quite a different haircut for the alpaca to denote how they're often used for, for wool, for yarn. And it was really fun getting these in this shape to make sure that they stood up as well. I wanted this sort of slightly more realistic end of the spectrum look there. We're going to go back to inverts for the next one. Again, currently underneath a small sleeping child, but it's the tarantula. Now, when I made this tarantula, I put pipe cleaners in all of the legs so that it was poseable. It it turned out that when a child sleeps on top of the pipe cleaners, and this was true for the scorpion earlier as well, they sometimes poke the child. So I extracted the pipe cleaners from the tarantula, so it is a slightly flatter shape now, but still full arachnid. Next up is the seal. I love seals, and so does my future sister-in-law, and that is who I made the seal for. And again, I went full into the caricature for this to really make it work, and I was super picky over the yarn I used, so that had this slight patination to it, so it looked more like a seal's sort of mottled fur. And sliding straight into the next one, here's the manatee. Now, I made the manatee on a bigger scale with a simpler colour of yarn, and it was in inspired by uh, someone who answered uh, comments. So I put up a poll, I've been assured, about what people's favorite animals were to try and get some inspiration for new patterns. And a couple of people said manatee, and I was like, that's good actually. He's got this little lip. It gives him this little pouty face that I'm really pleased with. I like this manatee and his chunky body super soft and squishy. This little this little mouth section is slightly trickier. It's got some back loop only to work into it, but still, nice, quick to work up pattern there, if you like a manatee. Staying in the sea for just a moment. It's a squid. I don't know about you, but I think cephalopods are completely amazing. They can squish themselves through tiny spaces and recognize individual people. And I, I swear they make plans and execute them. They're very cool. I really, really enjoyed this one. In fact, I think I'm gonna make an octopus to go with it in a similar style and it was super quick to work up. I've had a couple of people pattern test it for me and I was so pleased with what they came up with. It was really lovely. Next up, ones that I made, I think it must be about a year ago now, maybe slightly more. There's the rhino here with its colourful horn. It doesn't show up so well on the photos, I'm afraid, but I used a white fleck to yarn with rainbow like insert bits into it, which I think made it look like lovely soft toyish. And I did the same style with my hippo. These are sort of the more plushy style of design rather than the more realistic style of design. And they have been very enthusiastically received by the small children that they have gone to. Then we're gonna wing our way back into realism. It's the sugar glider. I don't know in terms of how I feel about my crochet patterns, whether I've actually quite matched this in terms of how pleased I felt at the end of a project. It's such a cute little animal and so rarely to my mind do you see toy versions of them. Oh my goodness, are they cute? and they look like flying squirrels. Should have really lumped her in with the sea creatures. This is my sea otter. Uh, what specifies this as a sea otter rather than like a river otter is just the sort of pattern that I did with the face in a slightly different color, but also it's designed to be laid on its back. So it looks like it's knocking oyster shells with stones. I should crochet a tiny oyster shell for it and a tiny stone. That would be adorable. This is my two for one pattern. It's the crochet wallaby with its tiny joey. 
I made this in chenille yarn as you probably noticed I don't use that so often but for the look that I wanted for this I was like I'm gonna go for it and if you want it to be a kangaroo instead of a wallaby that's absolutely fine I'd maybe give it a slightly longer nose and a slightly longer body just add a couple of rounds in if that's what you like but watch out for this pouch because this is uh, played with by children and uh, my sewing has uh, apparently been lacking in that so I'll fix that up after I finish this this is my raccoon. I really wanted this one to be super beginner friendly but still look like a raccoon. And I worked with the colors to do the color changes in such a way that they sort of hinted towards the mask and things like that, but without going overboard and too detailed on it. So nice, simple, classic, again, teddy bear style of toy, but hopefully immediately identifiable as a raccoon. They're a wild animal to me, like, wild zoo animal because they are not native to this country. I should point out I learned to crochet in US terms so despite the English accent my crochet patterns are in US terms but I still don't get raccoons in the wild. <laughs> what I do get however and who ate my chickens a couple of months ago so I feel quite less fond of now is Naughty Mr Fox. It's a thing I don't forgive him but I still quite like my fox. Cute little patch, cute little neck, under the chin there to give that highlight and I pop some little patches into the ears as well. And I do often like to do this, I define the wrists, it just makes it a bit more clear. Often when someone glances at a toy, I think for it to look sort of slightly more stylized without a lot more effort. So that's the fox. This squirrel gave me no end of trouble because I really wanted to have a bottle brush tail and the fluffy bits on the ears that you get in a red squirrel. I got a, uh, a, a slicker brush, like a pet grooming brush and brushed it a bit with some success at the beginning. After a while, I hardcore brushed it and managed to get to the point that I wanted. I would advise you to be a little bit more choosy about the yarn that you use if you want to brush it up afterwards and make sure it's one that's going to fluff out nicely. This monkey has the longest limbs of anything I've ever made. Uh, my friend, when she pattern tested this, she made it in an orange yarn and it looks just like an orangutan so that was very cool and if you want to use the same pattern to make yours into a orangutan as well two thumbs up and I'd love to see a photo of that I'm really fond of how the expression came out and I had a, like a small hint of a smile before and then I really upped its smile game because it looked like it needed one then we've got the elephant which is a very similar style to the rhino and the hippo from earlier. I think I made it around a similar time. The trunk for this, again, I wanted that sort of obvious over the top part of it so that it was just instantly recognizable. So what I did was I stuck um, a couple of pipe cleaners wound together to make them even more firm into the trunk again to make it nice and poseable. When you're doing that, if you're gonna give it to a smaller kid, let the parent know that you've put pipe cleaners into it and always make sure that you sort of fold over and rub together the ends of the wire. So wind them up and wind them up so there's not sharp edges as well. Moving massively back down the scale. This is my giant Madagascan day gecko. She's based on my own gecko who's just over there, Sisu and Sisu has got an adorable little heart on the top of her head which I wanted to give a nod to in this pattern and make sure that there was some really lovely bold bright colours too. It's a nice small pattern and again pipe cleaners in the legs to make them poseable. The toes are debatably a little bit fiddly but if you have any problems making them up just pop me across an email. I'm happy to help with that but hopefully the instructions will make it nice and clear for you if you do decide to make your own gecko which would make me really happy because you know lizard and finally the last one i wanted to show you today is my opossum oh no i bent his ear on my lap oh, that's sad times i'm gonna be doing some sewing after this apparently but yes it's my opossum in order to get the maximum cute factor for this one I used the biggest safety eyes that I could find that didn't make it look ridiculous in googly. I'm really pleased with the impact this one has. I also used a quite sort of rough and textured yarn to give it a slightly more furry look because they have this sort of slightly like someone's just made them jump kind of thing going on with their fur and, and I wanted that to show across in this. So I hope it does. I hope that you really enjoyed seeing those 
all of the patterns are on the Lucy Kate Crochet website which I will link down below. Some are free patterns, some are PDFs and some have both. So check them out, I'd love to hear what you think and please do come and chat to me in the comments section below, I can't wait to see you there. And what was your favourite? Tell me what your favourite was. If you didn't like any of them, don't tell me that because it makes me sad, but tell me, tell me what your favourite was. I really want to hear about it. See you there.